Hello, I'm Alex Dickens from Team 2654E Echo, and I'm going to quickly go over the Path Planner application that I've developed over the past couple of years and some helpful features in it and what I think you guys should consider adding to your own path planning application. So starting off with this screen here, the main screen, I created this field that I can easily look at, and it allows me to place these Bezier paths anywhere I want on the field and then simulate their movement is another key component. I always have a simulator. It makes it much easier to see even if it's not time accurate like mine is, you can see if you can see where the robot will be at any point on the path, as you can see here, it's extraordinarily helpful for designing paths quickly and effectively that avoid objects such as the structure intake rings. There's some paths here, such as this one is a perfect example of it, where the bounding box of the robot needs to be carefully considered while going on motions like this, or you can see here how it's intaking there, even though it looks like the path totally misses it and then it's going to the corner just right like that. So that's a helpful feature that I would suggest adding. Additionally, we have this feature where you can switch between skills and try and tell you how <laughs> skills and matches. This is a very helpful feature as it allows us to customize paths for both very quickly and efficiently. Another thing that I think teams that I've seen can work on a bunch is their completion of tasks during the path. So this is a feature of my path planner that uses these commands that I call them throughout the path, where it will have this command that it runs in my code. And that's something I'll go over in another video, how I run commands in my code. There's this command that will run after this point is passed on the path and uses a combined T approach. So you can see that at 0.6% ish, ish, very strong emphasis on inch, 0.6 ish on this path, 0.06 on this path, it will do this command intake with ejects to start intaking. And then you can see at the end of this path here, designated by this ye other yellow dot, it'll do this other action. I found this to be very effective and it makes sure you can actually specify the place in space where things happen instead of just a time-wise type thing. Another important thing in my path planner is the simulation component that finds the velocity of the path. So with the motion profiling, I can actually tell the exact velocity that any point on the path is going to be and see how it changes over time, which I found extraordinarily helpful for designing, especially certain paths that are more sensitive to velocity and acceleration, angular velocity stuff. And then I store all of these paths in a JSON file that I send as a static asset to the robot. I do this using a JSON file formatted like this with the start and end speed of the entire path and then a bunch of small Bezier curves to find its points that make up each of the small path segments. Each of the segments I have the velocity and acceleration constraints, and then inverted or backwards and the stop end constraint. This stops the path at the end. This is very helpful for making certain paths where you want the robot stop in the middle and then continue going. They're very rarely used, but where they're used, they're extremely helpful to slow down the velocity of the robot and maybe have an action happen while the robot is stopped instead of moving. And then another thing that's unique to my path planner is this velocity acceleration panel. It's not super elegant, but what it does is it, you can change the visibility of certain paths and you can see, I can like turn on these two paths and look at how those affect it. But let's say I just want to edit the first one. I can do that without the extra overhead of having all these paths visible and changing them all at the same time. So that's what that component is used for. And then additionally, this highlighting yellow as you put your mouse over them is a super nice quality of life feature because then I can know I'm changing the velocity on that path segment without having to count out the path segments. Additionally, on this screen, you can tell that some paths are blue and some paths are orange. Orange indicates backwards movement, blue indicates forwards movement. As is seen in this motion here, you can tell easily which paths are forwards and backwards. And then the green is the start and red is the end arrows for the Bezier curves. Additionally, you can see these stop end components. So let's say on this path, I wanted to stop at the end or that, that variable broken. Stop at the beginning of this path then I can say, do that, and you'll see in the simulation, as it goes towards that movement, it stops in the middle and then continues moving, which is extremely helpful. And then these reverse constraints are super easy to touch. All of this code is on GitHub already under the AL Planner app, and you can find it there. It's all in Flutter. And then one last thing I want to talk about is path switching. So you're going to have a variety of paths and path segments over and over again in your path. So I use this approach where I have this folder with a bunch of different paths and you can open them and see what is in those paths. And then I have this mirroring feature, especially for this here, which has been helpful. And I can see what this path looks like on the skills field per se, 
and how it moves around the field. As if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments. I'll go through and answer all of them. Thank you for watching.